We are 43 subs away from 17,000 here on the Alabama Football Report. And producer Chris does not know this, but now he does. If we do not get there before our next video, he is fired. Help him keep his job by subscribing right now. We've got another commitment day for an Alabama target. That is three-star linebacker Luke Metz. Set to announce his commitment today at 5 Eastern, we think. Uh, also seen 5.30 out there, but somewhere in that ballpark, Eastern time, a decision will come for the three-star linebacker who is very much in the mix for Alabama. Had his unofficial visit on Thursday. Uh, we will have a short on this, by the way, on the channel if he does commit, so stay tuned for that one. 424 overall, that's his rank in the 24-7 sports uh, composite rankings. Look, they're always behind on these numbers. 424 might be enough to get you the four-star when it's all said and done as more names get added, etc. Uh, 48th ranked linebacker, number 47 player from the state of Georgia. Among the top contenders for Mets, Alabama, of course, LSU. He also recently took visits to both Michigan and Ole Miss. Given that level of interest in terms of the caliber of programs after Mets, I would not be surprised if come National Signing Day, which I think they're changing again, I got to get my dates figured out there, uh, he will maybe a four-star recruit. That would add to a lengthy list of four-star linebacker recruits here. Daryl Johnson, four-star, Duke committed the other day. Uh, Abdul Sanders, junior, and Miles Johnson. So, A, Despite half these dudes being named Johnson, I am starting to notice a trend here. And it is very clear to me that Alabama, D.C., Kane Womack has a soft spot for these kind of Swiss Army knife style linebackers that can do a couple different roles for you and, and be a little bit more, you know, non thumper y throwback style linebackers. Bama did land uh, Abdul Sanders back on Thursday to add to a, another linebacker. We didn't really mention that because we were doing other things that day. His overall profile, four-star recruit, 335 overall. Another player from California. By the way, that list does continue to grow here. The 37th ranked linebacker in the class as well. So in the way, way, way too early 2025 rankings, don't look now, here comes Kalen DeBoer charging up the list. For the most part, it's the usual suspects in some order. Notre Dame, LSU, Clemson, Ohio State, Penn State. Lesser extents, Auburn, Oklahoma. No Georgia, by the way. Bama's at eight. And then I'll bet my entire life savings that Wisconsin and Texas Tech do not finish nine and 10 when it's all said. And because again, it is a way too early ranking. So where do you rank? The Alabama, or I should say grade, the 2025 Bama class. A, B, C, D, or F, sound off for me in the comments section. Praise Portal returns once again, and I can't wait for the spring there. Post-spring, could be some big names in there. Uh, Michigan wide receiver Carmelo English announced he's going to enter the portal back on 416, so week-ish ago, somewhere in that range. Uh, posted this statement. On his Instagram, I thoroughly enjoyed my time as Wolverine. I'd like to thank Coach Harbaugh, Coach Moore, Coach Bellamy for believing in my ability at Michigan. More notably, I appreciate my teammates, fans, and support staff. After careful consideration, I will be entering my name in the transfer portal on April 16th. I, I think I misspoke. Posted this a few days ago. He's going to enter the portal on 416. So it was right on the graphic. I just I can't read, apparently. Uh, that's when the second portal wave will open. So I think you'll see some fun names in there. English has the greatest touchdown-to-catch ratio possible. It was one. But it still counts, right? Uh, could also maybe off offer some kick-punt return uh, value as well. The reason why I think he, he makes, or why we're mentioning him is, A, there is the overlap with some Michigan support staff, Courtney Morgan, who's now at Alabama, uh, with some overlap with the Michigan time. Not quite one-to-one -one timing there, but still noteworthy. More importantly, from Alabama. Four-star recruit in 2023, he was 189 overall, 26th ranked wide receiver, and number 16 from the state of Alabama. I suspect in a world that already has college football free agency, I expect I'm going to lose some players in the portal. So I think it's good to know who's going in because you might swap out a receiver or two this time around. Alabama football jerseys are on sale up to 30% off 
We'll put that link in the comments section and the description for you on today's show. They've got fully customized jerseys. You can also pick and choose some alumni players, so, you know, Bryce Young, Najee Harris, Devonta Smith, etc., Derrick Henry, etc., etc., to rep your uh, throwback player to a certain extent. Up to 30% off every now and then a little bit higher, but 30% tends to be the, the, the main number there. So check out that link in the comments section and the description of today's show. It's chatsports.com slash Alabama jersey. Now, Tony T's back again saying that Scott Cochran, it was, I should say, at Alabama's athletic facility. That was on yesterday on Saturday. So you know what that means, right? He's coming back to Alabama. Yay! Or also, watch out for the ACLs, whatever it is. Uh, look, the, the rumors will be there for a while. Uh, did recently leave Georgia with not great indications as to why. You know, he said he wanted to be more than a strength and conditioning coach and does that at Georgia and then kind of doesn't go well enough, I guess. By the way, also still has Georgia in his Twitter bio. Always a red flag for me uh, from, for when you let leave... And don't take out the, in the Twitter bio. Like, what are you doing out there? Anyway, what is notable, his son Bo, is a 2026 recruit. Now, there's no online recruiting profile for him at this stage, still pretty early. He does play safety. That could be the connection going on from that perspective. Maybe it's just an early unofficial visit for Bo Cochran. That wouldn't be a huge surprise. The unofficial visits are easier to manage and juggle than, you know, organizing the official, which we can't even do yet anyway. So I'll leave this up to you guys, knowing how some of you feel about him. Do you want to add Scott Cochran to the staff? It would be, let's say it's, assume it's, it's the training staff side. Why for yes and for no in the comments. The pads are now on for Alabama, and a couple noteworthy practice observations. Uh, good notes here from Clint Lamb of On3 uh, in particular I wanted to share. Let's begin with that center battle. Parker Brailsford against James Brockermeyer. I have long assumed and will continue to guess that Brailsford ends up being the guy. He came over from Washington. Center was a big area of concern. They were giving Brockermeyer more run along the offensive line uh, earlier on, but it does sound like your first unit for now looks like this. Elijah Pritchett, Tyler Booker, Parker Brailsford, uh, Jaden Roberts, Miles McVay. I will make notes. We can't uh, we can't put Caden Proctor on here yet. Uh, that's not how it works. Check in again in a little under a month, and we'll have some fun with it. Um, but I think this this I think is your best five right now. And maybe you try to cross train Pritchett to both left tackle and right tackle from that perspective. Your next line is is Bertrand, Alinian, uh, Brockermeyer, Casey Poe getting some run there at guard alongside a uh, Rockwell. Rock Montgomery, too, and Wilkin Formby as well. So what is your confidence level in the Alabama offensive line? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. To the other side of the ball, the defensive backfield makes me feel a little bit better about that uh, as we sit right now. Here's what Kalen DeBoer said on the freshman DBs. They've certainly been highlighted throughout these first five practices. Red, meaning Red Morgan, made a nice play or two today, and Zayvon Brown's been super consistent. Really beyond what you would expect for guys that are so young, it's been really positive with those guys. If I had to guess, maybe it looks a little bit like this. I think you'll see some, some rotation uh, with, with Malachi Moore. Red Morgan's gotten a lot of run uh, at that husky, kind of that nickel overhang safety hybrid st spot there. Uh, Zabin Brown got some starting run opposite Damani Jackson at the, the open-ish practice. Malachi Moore, which we had mentioned, maybe he plays back there at deep safety. Um, we will have to monitor, by the way, you know, you know, what things look like for Devonta Smith. It, it banged up again, or at least coming off of an injury. So that's, that's kind of like the wild card right now. And I do, think we, I do think we will continue to see some rotation across the board in the secondary. We'll have more updates on that. Maybe the, the Devonta Smith injury, if, if we get more info on that front as well. Uh, if, the, if the reports are true of the freshmen looking good, that makes me feel better about it. Part of the anxiety is, ah, they're total unknowns. Well, if they're playing well early on, that probably does lead to some, if not you know, week one, week 10 confidence in that secondary. 
And before we go, both the men's and women's basketball teams set to try to advance further in the NCAA tournament. So Sweet 16 coming up here. We'll see if Bama men's. I know they I have a short on that one tonight for you. Win or loss or win or lose as well. Spam RTR for me in the comments section to support them right now.